Okay, so uh, the exercise was basically to have this button control the LED, and uh, there are so many ways to do it. And uh, one distinction that uh, I've actually talked with some of the groups about it already, but I think it's worth to take up here in one of these small sessions. Uh, one big distinction is if you do uh, control things with circuitry, or if you control things with your code. So. For example, the, the uh, exercise was about basically controlling an LED with a button. And of course, it's possible to connect a button directly to uh, the LED. And in that way, make it turn on and off when you press the button, for example. So what I could actually do now is to try that on. So we have the LED. <coughs> And uh, what I should provide to it is perhaps then 5 volts or some power. And I have uh, attached um, power and ground to these rails here. So the top one of these will be 5 volts and the lower one will be uh, ground. So I will take from the top one here, provide 5 volts to the input of the LED. And uh, if I directly connect that one to ground now, we can see and verify that, yeah, it's lighting up. But then if we go um, make it through the button, so it goes on the input, on the plus side of the LED, through the resistor, through this cable here, to the in one side of the button, and then on the other side of the button it goes back to ground. And thus, when I press the button here, it will close the circuit. And uh, this allows me then to control the LED. The important point th uh, to note here is that it's done in the circuit. It's done with electronics. So sometimes this can of course be useful. And if you're designing some more intricate circuitry, this is good to know about how you could connect things together in different ways. But for this example, I would say that it makes less sense to use this kind of circuit than to instead uh, divide the different parts of the LED and the button to different pins and then control it through the software. One example is that maybe I want uh, the LED to blink while I'm holding the button pressed. That wouldn't be possible with this electronic uh, circuitry I've made here. Uh, instead, I would then have to actually uh, connect them in another way and actually write code that is doing this. So let's go back to the LED and instead of uh, feeding it with five volts from it for its input, I will instead feed it from uh, one of the pins. And I choose number 12 in my case. And uh, I will then connect the minus pole of the LED to ground. So then I can uh, control the LED with pin number 12 from my code. <coughs> and similarly, I will now then connect pin number 8 to act as the button pin to sense uh, what happens to the button. And I will use the pull-up, internal pull-up resistor, which I discussed earlier today. So I don't have to connect a resistor here on the breadboard because I'm using the internal pull-up. So now I have one circuitry here for my LED and one separate circuitry here for my button. So then it's about uh, writing the software that controls this. So let's then uh, switch to the code actually. So, <coughs> I actually made uh, already some code here uh, before. So I uh, labeled uh, or created a variable to hold the LED pin. So I put the LED on pin number 12 and I put the button on pin number 8. And I also use pin mode to set them up accordingly. Uh, so pin mode for button pin is input with pull up, as I discussed earlier. And the pin mode for the LED pin is uh, output. 
then I can actually in my code, in my loop, uh, control uh, what should be done. And in this case, I actually now always read uh, the button pin. And I have this exclamation mark in front of it, which is basically inverting the value. So if this would be uh, zero, it will turn it into a one with this one. So basically this is uh, as if you would write not in front of it, not digital read, uh, a negation basically of this value. So then I will receive that as the button value and in my next row I actually use that button value directly to write to the lead pin. Uh, and as you can see when I now press, you can see that the LED is doing this. But the key point here is that I can actually control, I ha can have more control over the logic. For example, I could say that if the button is pressed, I want to blink two times. in a row. So here I have a small segment that basically is doing that. And if it's not pressed, I would just turn it off. Uh, let's see if this works. So it seems like the code is uploaded and it's not blinking but if I press it, it's blinking. And as you see, if it ever uh, recognizes that I press the button, it will do at least two blinks because that's what I put into the uh, if statement. But it will also continue to do this if I hold the button down. So this is just an example to show that uh, by trying to uh, divide your different logic parts, in your circuit, you can uh, have more control and do things in the in the program, in the Arduino software that uh, might not be possible if you do it only with your circuits. So that was it 